there is one Linux argument which always comes back around. GNOME and theming. And about a month ago, I saw this talk from Tobias Bernard on Open Tech Will Save Us about exactly this. Now, in case you don't know who this guy is, alongside his work on GNOME doing design work and things like that, he is also the creator and continued supporter of Please Don't Theme Our App, Stop Theme My App, or whatever you want to call it. An open letter from independent app developers to the wider GNOME community. And as someone sort of unaffiliated with either side of this discussion, I don't use GNOME, I don't love GNOME, but I also don't hate GNOME. GNOME just happens to exist. Sure, I'll make fun of things they do every so often, but ultimately, I don't really care about GNOME. And as someone in this position, I wanted to sort of honestly discuss the issues raised by Tobias, raised by other members of the GNOME team, and why this is a problem they actually care about. Now, in case you never got the memo after all of this time, it has absolutely nothing to do with what individuals do on their system. If you want to go and have a pink and blue theme that resizes everything, it completely breaks your layout, you are completely free to do that. No one wants to stop that happening. I don't think you should do it, but you can go and do it if you want to. But what you need to know is you have stepped into completely unsupported territory. Do not report any bugs that could possibly have anything to do with your theme. Maybe a button isn't working like it should and the text that's spawning looks really weird. Maybe contrast is terrible and it's really difficult to read the text. It is absolutely not the dev's problem and you should go and fix your theme. Now that might sound really harsh, but it's a matter of practicality. There are so many GTK themes out there that do so many things that it's impossible to make sure your application is going to work properly for every single one. Especially when GTK doesn't really have a theming API. What it has is it exposes the CSS underlying the applications. This allows you to do minor changes like changing some colors, changing some font sizes, maybe a bit of layout and things like that to the complete destruction of the UI. It is a very touchy and prone to breakage way of theming, but you as the user decided to go and use it. So you should be well aware of the consequences of doing so. The much bigger issue is distro shipping a theme that is not the default theme of the application. That's the other thing. Tobias doesn't care if an application looks like a GNOME app. What he cares about is by default it is shipped with the theme that was tested, that was QA'd by the developer of the app. So if you design something with GNOME in mind, you probably designed it around the AdWaiter theme. But maybe you designed it around some completely separate theme, in which case that should be the theme shipped with the application. Because by shipping a different theme, one of two things are assumed. Firstly, that the distro maintainers have thoroughly tested that theme. They have made sure that every application in the default environment works well with that theme. And while some major distros may have done this, there is going to be a lot of cases out there where they just ship the theme, they test a couple of things, and basically assume they're good. The second thing is that users are going to assume that that is the default way the application should be looking. And unlike when you installed the theme yourself, you're not aware that this is an unsupported operation. So if something is going wrong with the application, you're going to assume it's a problem with the application. You're going to go and report the bug, and the dev is basically going to be put in this situation where they either have to say, this is not a problem, and try to get you to understand it's actually a problem with your distro's theme, or go and support something they had never planned to support. But even in cases where distro maintainers thoroughly QA themes, there is always going to be problems. Whether their testing isn't as thorough as they would like it to be, and they miss certain applications, certain features of certain applications, maybe applications have updates that add in new features, add in new buttons, change the layout a bit, and it completely changes the way things need to be QA'd, or maybe there's just an update to the theme that slightly modifies the way things work and it goes and breaks some random application. Now, obviously app developers don't want users to hate their project, but when there's a problem with a theme on a certain distro, most users aren't going to blame the distro, they're instead going to blame the application developer. So this puts these devs into a weird situation where they either have to support every theme under the sun 
or limit the scope of what is visually possible in their apps to make sure that as few themes as possible are going to break. Now, one of the examples that Tobias brought up is visually changing apps in this way wouldn't be considered acceptable on many other platforms. Take for example with Android. Let's say we have Samsung's skin of Android and they decide, hey, we don't like the color of Instagram, for example. We're going to make it green or we're going to make it fluorescent pink or whatever color they went with. It would be pretty reasonable for Instagram to say, hey, stop doing that. We didn't QA the app like this. We are getting bug reports saying that this theme is completely broken. Stop it. Now, the counterpoint I would say to that is that Instagram and other apps like that don't expose a way for the system to change the theme. Now, the one counterpoint I would say to that is applications like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, when we're talking about the app form, don't expose a way for the system to theme the application. Whereas something like GTK absolutely does. But I do agree that the app developers absolutely have the right to say, stop doing that. This is not the way we tested the app. Whether you or the gist you're using actually listens to them is a whole nother question. Now, whether you like to buy us or not is entirely up for you to decide. But what I feel like he does is makes a really level-headed position for his argument. There are plenty of other positions out there which I feel like are kind of insane, and you're better off just ignoring. All they do is clutter the discussion. Eventually, app devs are going to start using trademark to stop companies and distros from overriding their look and feel while keeping the same name. Yes, the license allows you to do changes, but the license doesn't allow you to use the same name if you make changes. E.g. if you take the source code and change everything about it, and it no longer acts like the original app, then that's not the same app anymore, is it? And the developer, thanks to the license, has no obligation to support any problems you have with it. It's just a theme, and you're using GTK. GTK has this functionality built in. Trying to make enemies like this is not helpful to anyone, and it isn't going to convince anyone your site is right. Now, we can't talk about GNOME and theming without talking about Lib and Waiter. Now, this deserves an entire video to itself because there is a lot of misinformation still floating around about what it actually does. Yes, Lib and Waiter does hard code add waiter. Yes, applications as is will not be following a custom system theme. Yes, this does improve the default behavior of applications for GNOME when run on other platforms like elementary. However, there is a good reason why hard codes is in quotes. The reason for that is because compared to GTK3, there isn't a new way to enforce the hard coded style. The GTK theme debug variable still works as does this path to go and have a theme file, which you can use for more permanent changes. And there are probably three other ways of doing this. The process to theme your system might be a little bit different compared to GTK3, but it will still work. There are distros right now that are using LibAdWaiter apps that are shipping a theme. And if you go to places like r slash GNOME, you're going to see a lot of people theming their applications like they could always do. The plan for Libad Waiter was never to break theming. The reason people have this idea is based on an alpha version of the API that was not complete yet, and it didn't have this functionality. But now that it's available, people are using it perfectly fine. One of the main reasons for the introduction of Libad Waiter is actually introducing a proper theming API, rather than going and modifying all of the CSS and potentially breaking the complete layout of the application, instead allowing you to recolor certain parts of the application while maintaining the proper layout. I'm not saying you have to like the direction that GNOME is taking theming, whether it's theming on downstream distros that want to go and modify everything, or whether it's theming in the context of LibAdWaiter. I'm not saying you have to like it, but if you're not going to like it, at least understand how it's actually functioning and what it's actually doing. And I'm going to leave a lot of write-ups about GNOME and theming in the description down below. I highly recommend you go and read these, and fully understand what's happening in this situation and why these changes are being made. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section 
down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and I'll pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and...